This is the Volkswagen ID3, easily the most hyped electric vehicle of 2020. Specifically, this is the ID3 First Plus. So what this has is a 58 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. It's housed in the floor of the car and it has a 204 horsepower rear wheel drive electric motor. It also has 310 newton meters of torque and it can accelerate from 0 to 100 in 7.3 seconds. Crucially, and unlike the previous e-Golf, this is a bespoke electric vehicle. It's the first Volkswagen to be built on the group's modular MEB platform. Most importantly is that this has claimed 419 kilometers of driving range. So it's significantly more, and it puts it at the sharper end of what people are now expecting from electric vehicles. Dimensionally speaking, it is very close or almost identical, in fact, to the Volkswagen Golf. So that gives you an idea of exactly how large this car is. The exterior design is not what we're used to seeing from Volkswagen. It's, well, it's got a much more friendly face now. Um, it's got the new type of Volkswagen logo, but you have this light bar that goes across here and it actually extends in through the top of the headlights. It gives the car quite a distinct look, although this feature does also now come on Volkswagen Golf and it will become part of the look of future Volkswagens. Now being electric, there's no real grill as such to speak of. There is a little bit of an air intake along here, but everything else is all blanked off. There's a little bit of detailing here, but otherwise it's quite a plain and well, quite simple look to the front of the car. As the ID3 is built on its own dedicated electric platform, it means Volkswagen has been able to play around with how the car is shaped and its layout. You'll notice that the front and rear wheels are stretched much further out to either end. That serves two purposes. Firstly, it allows more space within the floor of the car for that lithium ion battery, but it also means that there's more space inside the cabin for the passengers. Although this is around about the size of a Volkswagen Golf, it does feel a little bit roomier inside, especially up front because of how that windscreen is shaped. But around the rear, you don't lose out either. There's still 385 liters of boot space in the back. First thing you'll notice when you sit into the ID3 is there is a noticeable amount of space inside. Part of that is due to the fact that the windscreen is so far ahead of you. So the scuttle along the bottom of the windscreen feels about two feet away from you, uh, much further away than what you would typically be used to seeing in something like a Golf. And the Golf is probably the one car this is gonna be most comparable to because they're quite closely related in terms of exterior dimensions and even stuff like boot space are almost identical to each other. So what do you have? Well, this is quite different inside because you have, first of all, a smaller digital instrument cluster directly in front of you. It's actually perched on top of the steering column here and jutting out from that is your drive selector. So to engage drive or reverse or park, uh, you use this toggle uh, on the side. It's very similar to what BMW used in the i3. Um, it's quite a good execution actually, because you don't, funny enough, you can't actually really see it because of the steering wheel, um, but it's very, it's a good use of space because it doesn't take up any extra room. It's not in your way, it doesn't block anything. And then the park function is actually on the edge of it. So it's very easy when you pull in, just hit park. It's quite simple and straightforward. The steering wheel is the latest of its kind from Volkswagen and it includes these two capacitive panels. So these are touch sensitive panels for all of the various different controls uh, and they do provide some both sound and haptic feedback. So you can swipe through or press them in to go through different functions and obviously you can adjust your volume control and all the other things. Um, it just does it without having individual buttons. Now, personally, I prefer having the physical buttons. Um, I don't find that these are always the easiest things to uh, work your way around, but um, that's what Volkswagen is putting into this particular car. Most people will probably get used to it over time. Um, there's a slightly flat bottom steering wheel, but it's pretty much round for the most part. And all the other controls, such as your indicators and wipers and all those functions are very much straightforward or as you would typically find them. 
One other cool feature is that this version gets uh, play and pause symbols on the accelerator and the brake, which is kind of a nice function. And one other thing is that when you get into the car, um, you don't even have to press the start button. Once you put your foot on the brake, it actually starts to activate the car and then you can just adjust, select drive. Um, and as you do that, you get this illuminated bar across the base of the windscreen, which again, it's a nice function. It gives you a little bit of an audible alert that it's now active and you can just get in and drive. It's very easy and straightforward. The LED headlights are uh, controlled in here. Now they do have an automatic function. So for the most part, you'll actually never actually need to reach in and touch uh, to adjust the headlights. The only thing is that this capacitive uh, panel does also control your demisting functions and also your fog light functions. So you may end up having to use it a little bit, but it's in there. Um, it's a bit unusual because it's in there. We're used to seeing this on the outer side of a dashboard layout, but I don't think anyone's gonna have any issue with that. And then you have the uh, 10 inch display here. It's all effectively in one uh, unit. So you have your temperature controls on either side. And then uh, at the front, you have your hazards, uh, your drive modes of which there are four, parking assist and driver assist aids, and then a shortcut button to the uh, automatic parking features and the climate control. It's very easy to use. It's a very simple layout. I do prefer this look of two separate screens compared to the way, for example, in the Golf, they join them into one panel. Um, I think this looks a little bit better having them separated. Although I do have some issues with the infotainment system. It is just simply not up to scratch for a car at this price point and what people are going to expect with it. I found that it is often hesitant. To, it's slow to start up. Uh, some of the functions occasionally don't work. I had my mobile phone paired to it and then earlier today I get in and it just refused to recognize it. It didn't spot it. I ended up turning the car on and off and blah, 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 blah. All these sort of little niggles that are there, um, which are a little bit annoying to use. Even the fact that the layout, and this is, you know, it may seem slightly pedantic, but the layout of the infotainment screen is clearly designed for a left-hand drive market. What I mean by that is that the home button and your climate controls are all on the furthest part of the screen, furthest away from you. Now, I'm five foot nine, I don't have particularly short arms, but I did notice that I just end up having to reach all the way over. If it was on this side, it would just be a little bit easier. It's a really small thing, but it's one of those things that I think as you live with this car over time, it may start to bug you. It certainly bugged me um, that they couldn't just move it to the other side. Um, you do have uh, various swipe functions that you can use. So you can uh, wave your hand to, to skip through different screens. It usually does work. There is also a swipe function. So you can actually swipe your hand to go between different screens if you don't want to touch the touch screen. But I mean, I don't really see what the, why you would want to have to use that feature. Uh, the infotainment system itself, the menu function, it's kind of trying to adopt a smartphone-like interface in terms of everything appears as if they're apps, uh, the different menu functions. I just don't find it all that intuitive to use after driving the car for a few days. I've spent a lot of time just sitting in it and playing around with it. It's just not the most intuitive system out there. Um, now, again, if you're going to be living with the car longer term, you're probably going to get used to certain functions. Uh, but I just found that certain things weren't always where I would initially think they might be. Now being an electric car, there's a lot more storage up front as well, because you see the drive selector is moved up here. So there's two large cup holders here. You've got two additional storage areas here. They're actually angled, so it's handy to throw things in. For example, your mobile phone, there's actually a separate smaller dedicated slot for that. Although as I discovered, it's not a wireless charging pad. You do have two USB charge ports in the back here. Um, and there's a dividing area so you can actually have the, your phone sitting there and charging if you wish. There is a further storage area underneath here and obviously you can lift these two armrests for both the front seats. The one thing that is omitted from the inside is a 12 volt power socket. So there isn't one up the front, there is one in the boot. Although 
if you don't have a USB charging port and you, like me, usually have a uh, 12 volt power socket that you plug your USB into, you can't do that in this car. So it's a little bit annoying. Another thing that isn't in this car at the moment is Apple CarPlay. So at the moment, all I can do is use the Bluetooth function of my phone, which is fine for making calls and streaming, but I do lose that ability to mirror my smartphone onto this display here. It's a little bit frustrating, especially to introduce a car already and not have that available. Um, I think some owners may be a little bit disappointed by that. Equally, it's this car isn't yet running the augmented head-up display. So it's a little bit tricky given that I've experienced a quite a few niggles with this infotainment system in terms of it's laggy to respond, it's slow to start up. You don't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in it at the moment. You don't have the augmented reality uh, head-up display at the moment. These are all big features that a lot of people will have wanted in this car. And I think to introduce a car without these now and asking people to buy a car on the premise that we'll give you these things later on, it's kind of more like something from the Tesla playbook. And it's, well, frankly, I expected more from Volkswagen in that respect. Now, as you sit in the back, there's actually a reasonable amount of space back here. I'm about five foot nine and the driving seat in front of me is set up for how I would normally be seated when I'm driving and as you can see I've got quite a large amount of room here and um, I'm doing okay on headroom as well it's actually not that bad even if I sit very upright I still have about an inch and a half before I'm touching the ceiling and um, the way the seats are designed as well you do have even if that driver is a bit taller and sitting closer back it is slightly curved so it shouldn't be too bad and you can actually get your feet in a little bit underneath the seat in front. So if you do want, need to stretch out a little bit more on the longer journey, that's not too bad. The seat backs have two pouches on top and a larger one down below. So there's ample storage. There's also two USB-C ports in the rear as well. And because this is an electric car, there isn't a bulky transmission tunnel in the middle. So it's pretty much a flat floor all the way across. So that means even if somebody is sitting in the middle seat, granted this is a harder and slightly narrower seating position, uh, they can fit in there a little bit more easily um, and certainly smaller kids will probably find that fine. If you aren't using the middle seat, as you might expect, there's a fold down armrest, it has two cup holders and there's also a ski hatch so you can open this up further if you do need to load in any longer items, you can do that as well. In many ways, the ID3 is almost unremarkable in how it drives. What I mean is we've become quite used to electric vehicles being these quiet, polished, refined machines. And the ID3 performs exactly how you might expect a Volkswagen electric car to drive. It does feel quite well built. The suspension has a nice solid feel to it. It soaks up all the bumps pretty well but you're not left in a cocoon of isolation inside here. There is a little bit of road noise that comes through the tires and well, you get a little bit of an electric whir from the motor and you know, you do feel like you're driving a normal car. This isn't just this silent bubble to transport you from A to B. In urban settings, it does feel really nice to drive though. You've got that instantaneous torque of the electric motor and it's really easy to drive this in a almost one pedal fashion, provided you do put the drive into the battery saving mode. The steering has a nice and clear feel to it. It's well weighted and you do get a nice sense of connection. This does still feel in many ways like an analog car. Um, you get a sense of what the front axle is doing. And you, although this is a rear wheel drive motor, it's only when you start driving it a little bit harder and a little more enthusiasm that you do feel that shove from the rear. For the most part, people could drive this and they probably wouldn't really know that it's a rear wheel drive car. It's no bad thing, it's just something to point out. Now, the electric motor does have a bit more shove when you put it into the sport mode. Although I do find that if you leave it in sport mode and you're just driving in everyday settings, it can feel a little bit jerky. Uh, it will give you a bit of a jolt if you suddenly pull away from the lights with it. It's better off 
leaving it in normal mode, I find. That's what I've been doing most of the time that I've been driving the car. Even when you're out of the city, on country roads, the ID3 performs very well. That suspension does a really good job of soaking up all the surface imperfections and it rounds everything off quite nicely. So even though this car is on 19 inch wheels, it still does everything very well. It soaks it all up quite nicely. And the steering has a really nice, just well judged feel to it. It's comfortable too. You could do long distances in this car quite easily. There's a nice bit of support in the seats. And it's when you start to drive it with a bit more enthusiasm that you notice that rear wheel drive setup become a little bit more pronounced. You don't notice it all that much when you're just driving normally, but when you do start to drive it a little bit harder, uh, it's actually quite a bit of fun. It's a nice amount of uh, bite from the brakes. It's not exactly sharp, but you can slow the car down. There's a good degree of modulation there with the brake pedal. So that's good in that respect. And obviously then if you dial up the battery saving mode, the B mode with the transmission, you get a little bit of extra energy recovery going back into the battery. But as a car that you can point into corners well and squirt out of them with that instantaneous electric torque, it's a lot of fun, it's quite engaging. I think I haven't had as much fun driving an EV since the BMW i3s. It gets more impressive when you get out on an open road actually because that's really where it comes into its own. It feels really polished, but it still feels really nippy for an EV as well. And when you do get a in through really nice couple of corners, it's actually quite a lot of fun to drive. It handles really well. There's very little body roll and the steering has this nice degree of precision to it as well. It's much more than just some sort of eco electric milk float. This is something that you can have a bit of fun with. When it comes to driving, the ID3 performs exactly how you would expect a well-polished Volkswagen car to perform. It soaks everything up very well. The suspension is well judged for the car and you don't really get a sense of the weight of that battery being uh, in the floor of the car. The steering has nice, crisp, clear feel to it. As I have the car for only a couple of days, it's hard for me to give you an exact figure on what you should expect from a single charge. After all, Volkswagen says it will do 419 kilometers between fills. Now, so far since I last charged the car, I have done 123 kilometers and I have currently about 190 kilometers left according to the trip computer. Now, that's been a real mixture of driving. That's from town driving, urban driving, right up to motorways and some pretty sporty country roads. So there's a real mixture of everything. Um, not everyone is gonna probably do that in every sort of typical day. Uh, and I think realistically, most people could expect to see anything up to 360 kilometers from a single charge. But these figures are always dependent on how your driving style is, where you're driving, uh, and obviously you've got to take into account that in the winter months it's going to be a little bit colder outside and that ambient temperature will have an impact on the battery as well. There really is just so much to like about this car though. I just I really enjoy driving it. It makes electric driving feel entirely normal. You still get a bit of fun. It's, you know, it's relatively refined and it's sporty too. You can have a bit of fun with this car. In fact, it probably serves as a great basis for a proper hot hatch in a couple of years to come. So does the Volkswagen ID3 live up to the hype? Well, there's a lot to like about this car. It drives very well, particularly on bad roads, even on 19 inch wheels. The driving range seems quite good. I think most people will probably see anywhere from 320 to 360 kilometers on an average basis, depending of course on how you drive the car. But even on longer motorway journeys, does perform very well. It seems to be quite efficient in that regard. There's a lot to like about the design too. It's very normal in a lot of ways and there's a good amount of space inside. However, there's some issues that I'm not entirely sold on yet. The infotainment system is still a little bit glitchy. There are certain aspects of it still missing, such as the augmented reality head-up display. So we're not yet seeing the full potential of the Volkswagen ID3 yet. And in that respect, I would be inclined to wait a little bit longer. I would not be in a rush to go out and get one of these straight away. Let's wait and see what happens and hopefully Volkswagen can fully deliver the goods it has promised with the ID3. 
That's our first drive video review of the Volkswagen ID3. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please do give the video a thumbs up, but get involved in the comments below and tell us what you think about the car and how it stacks up against the other electric cars in the segment. If you want to know more about this and all of those rivals, you can do so by visiting our website at completecar.ie with detailed reviews and specifications of all kinds of cars there as well. If you don't already subscribe to the channel, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. And when you do that, if you hit the notification bell, next time we upload a video, you'll be alerted to that too. Thanks for watching.